just a quick video on diminished seventh chords today. Um, so we'll just sort of dive right in. Um, what's a diminished seventh chord? Uh, well, it's a dissonant chord made up four notes a minor third apart. So we've got this example of a diminished seventh chord here, a B, D, F natural and A flat. All of those notes are a minor third apart from each other. And indeed, if we carry that pattern on and we added a minor third on top of that A flat, we'd get a C flat, which is equivalent to a B. So it would continue that pattern on. Um, it's often used to build tension in a piece of music. Um, and it's highly, highly symmetrical due to it only containing minor third intervals between adjacent notes. So that's broadly speaking what it is. Um, it's important to also note that because it's really symmetrical, there are only three unique diminished seventh chords. So if I take that diminished seventh chord that we had at first, that, and then I move it up a semitone. So those are the three diminished seventh chords that we get before we get to which is which contains the same notes as the first one. So the first one contained a B natural, D, F and A flat and the last diminished seventh chord noted there contains a D, F, A flat which we've had before and a C flat which is the same as a B. So there are only three unique diminished seventh chords. Um, Okay, so in order to work out how to use them, we need to work out how, um, like where they come from, from what they're derived. So here we are in the key of C major. I've written out the tonic chord, first of all. Here's the tonic. And then here's the dominant chord in C major. Um, and really we can understand a diminished seventh being uh, used as a kind of dominant. So... Here we've got chord five, there's chord five, seven, a dominant seventh chord. And then quite a common decoration, um, like further decoration for a dominant seventh chord is to add a flattened ninth on top. So there's chord five, seven with a flattened ninth, in this case, this A flat. And then if we remove the root of that dominant seventh flat nine chord, we get B, D, F, A flat which is our diminished seventh. So if we imagine it as a kind of dominant chord, that, that helps us um, understand how to go about resolving it because it contains, um, contains a kind of leading note. So if we think of it as a, um, as a dominant seventh chord, the leading note in that dominant seventh chord is a B. So it has this leading note quality. And as we know from our, um, our discussions about how to resolve a dominant seventh, a, the leading note must always rise. It always, always rises. And that's something that happens when we resolve a diminished seventh. So here's um, a sort of diminished seventh resolution, or rather I should say resolutions. Part of the reason, uh, part of the, the reason why this chord is so special is that you can resolve it to many different places. So um, because the chord is symmetrical, we can treat any note in the chord as the leading note. Um, and then when we resolve that diminished seventh, the leading note has to rise. The leading note has been marked in red in each, t in each case. And the rest of the notes fall by step. OK, so if I play that first resolution, there's that diminished seventh chord and it resolves to C major. The B moves up to the C, the D moves down to the C, the F moves down to the E and the A flat moves down to the G. OK, um, but we can treat any of the notes in that chord as the leading note. So... If we treat the D as the leading note, then that can the D has to move up by a semitone and the rest of the notes move down by a step to an E flat major triad. If we treat the F in the chord as the leading note, then we can resolve it in the same manner to G flat major. 
leading notes up a step, rest every, everything else down by a step. And then if we take the A flat as the leading note, I've had to re-spell it as G sharp because you wouldn't really have a flat as a leading note. Uh, leading notes are always sharpened because they resolve upwards. So there's our B, D, F, A flat, which is G sharp here. And that resolves to A major. Um, of course, we can resolve it in the same manner to the minor key equivalents. So here they are. We've got that's diminished seventh to C minor, the diminished seventh by, to E flat minor, that diminished seventh to F sharp minor. I've written that as F sharp minor because G flat minor doesn't necessarily doesn't really exist. Um, and same diminished seventh to A minor. So from that one diminished seventh chord, you can resolve to eight different places. It's a very versatile chord harmonically um, and also great um, for building tension. That tonal ambiguity that it lends creates some real harmonic tension. Um, so the best way, I think, to understand um, how to go about using a diminished seventh chord is to practice writing them and practice resolving them. Now, obviously, we've looked at these in in isolation. These are just um, like sort of these are just kind of little examples that have been taken out of context, any kind of musical context. Um, but still, um, it's well worth writing out or trying to build a diminished seventh chord and then resolving them into um, resolve, you know, resolving them into the four different places that you can um, resolve those diminished seventh chords. So here's some exercises. I've given you um, two notes. I've given you a G and I've given you an E flat slash D sharp. And what I'd like you to do, what you could do, is you, could, is you can write out that diminished seventh chord on each of these notes. So write out a diminished seventh chord on G and write out a diminished seventh chord on D sharp slash E flat, and then resolve those, those diminished sevenths, treating each note in the chord as a leading note. Um, uh, so if you want, you can pause the video here, you can have a go at these exercises, and then I'll reveal the answers. Okay, so here's the answers. This is what your answer might look like. Um, so the diminished seventh chord on G needs to look a little bit like this. So G, B flat, D flat, and F flat. And that can resolve to A flat major. If we treat the G as the leading note, the leading note rises, everything else falls by step. If we treat the B flat as the leading note, we've got to do some rewriting. So we get A sharp and C sharp in the middle and E natural. That can resolve to B major. Here's that diminished seventh chord again. So we've got G, B flat. We're treating the C sharp as the leading note this time. There's the E and that can resolve to D major. Here's the diminished seventh again. This time we're treating the E as the leading note, and therefore we can resolve upwards to F major. Um, as always, we can always resolve to the minor key equivalents as well. So we can have to A flat minor, to B minor, to D minor, and to F minor. Um, on the bottom, we've got that D sharp diminished seventh, which we can resolve to E major. We can do some rewriting and uh, treat the F sharp as the leading note, so therefore it's got to go to G major. We can treat the A as the leading note, so therefore that A is going to resolve to B flat major. We can treat the C as the leading note, so therefore that's going to resolve to D flat major. And again, we can resolve to the minor keys as well. So here's that first one resolving to E minor. Here's that second one resolving to G minor. Here's that third one resolving to B flat minor. 
and here's the fourth one, resolving to D flat minor, which we'd really write, rewrite as C sharp minor. Okay, so, you know, really versatile chord. Hopefully you've got some of those. Um, it's important to note that uh, as if your answers might have looked a little bit different, but as long as the leading note rises and the rest of the notes fall by step, um, it's, you know, that's absolutely fine. I should just clarify that the leading note always rises by semitone and the other notes fall by step. I'm saying by step because sometimes they fall by a semitone, but sometimes they fall by a tone. It sort of depends on where the, where the next note in the chord is. So if I give you an example, that first one, the F flat falls by a semitone. The D flat falls by a semitone, but the B flat falls by a tone. <clears throat> so the leading note rises by a semitone, but the rest of the notes fall by step. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. We're going to have a look at some diminished seventh chords in context now. So the best example that I can think of and one that you'll be relatively aware of if you're doing the Edexcel GCSE course is um, the uh, opening of the Beethoven Pathetique Sonata. So I'll just play this through um, to give us a to remind us what it sounds like and then we'll have a look at how Beethoven uses diminished sevenths in this exercise, Ooh, sorry in this passage even. Okay, so that's where it, what it sounds like. Um, and so now, this is what a diminished seventh chord might look like in context. So we get a diminished seventh chord really quite early on. Um, we start off on chord one in C minor, and then we land on this chord. And if we consider um, the way this chord resolves, it'll give us a little clue as to what as to what. Um, what the function of this chord is. So it's resolving to chord five. This is clearly chord five in C minor. Um, and then we've got an F sharp, an A, a C, and an E flat. So that's clearly a diminished seventh. Um, in this case, the leading note is this F sharp. And so I know that if we're, if we're going back and we're thinking of this as a dominant seventh sharp nine without the root, the root of this chord would be D. So it's really, a kind of two chord. This is really a sort of a two seven B to five progression. Really common, um, just, you know, really common progression, two seven B five or two B five. But in this case, we've got it with a, uh, a sort of a diminished seventh. Um, so there we go. Now the next time we get five seven D. So the diminished seventh here is this B natural, D natural, F, A flat. Um, and so the B is the note being treated as the leading note. It's going up to this C minor chord. It's chord one. Um, and so because that B has been treated as the leading note, I'm, you know, I'm confident in saying, you know, that it's really a, a kind of a G dominant seventh flat nine chord. So that B natural is resolving upwards. So it's really a, now taking the note in the bass, a five, seven D one B progression. Um, here it's a little bit trickier because the F resolves down early. It resolves down a little bit earlier than the rest of the chord, um, which masks its resolution a little bit. Um, okay, and we've got another couple of examples here. We've got, uh, again, a 2-7-C. It's the same diminished seventh as before, just slightly rearranged. Um, that F sharp is resolving upwards and the rest of the notes resolve downwards. The C resolves down to the B, the A resolves down to the G and the E flat resolves down to the D. Um, so that's 2, 7, C, 
5b um, and we get the same thing again straight after it's repeated um, and then right at the end of this phrase we have a dominant pedal a dominant we get the dominant of e flat major um, and that leads us into the e flat major phrase that um, i played just the very beginning of earlier so even though this sounds really really complicated and there's lots and lots of um, kind you know kind of uh, sort of rich diminished seventh harmonies here the fundamental progression is actually really quite straightforward it's really just lots of chords one two and five but those chords have been decorated um, using these sort of diminished seventh harmonies um, right I hope that all makes sense um, I hope that's helpful um, please do let me know if you've got any questions or anything um, and yeah thank you very much bye bye, -bye.